is Kurt Hoffman, and I am uh, the author of the poster, The Unity of Human Diversity. I'm also an assistant professor of social work at Spring Arbor University in Spring Arbor, Michigan. So uh, the purpose of this video is to kind of introduce you to or give you the insider's look at um, why I wrote this poster, why I think the content matters, and how you can use it and apply it uh, in your life or in your profession. So, okay, so human diversity, right? Like this is probably one of the biggest topics that we're talking about, dealing with um, as a culture, as a country, if you're watching this in the United States or anywhere in the world, I guess, really it applies everywhere. Um, the question is, are we equal or are we diverse? Now, often it's presented as one or the other, that we are so diverse and we just need to affirm our diversity and celebrate diversity and have all of these um, highlight all of these areas and ways that we're diverse and different. Um, or you see people just like, we're the same, we need to treat each other the same, uh, you know, we're equals, we just need to affirm human equality uh, across the board. And for myself, and part of why I wrote the poster is because I agree with both sides. I see that they're not opposites, um, that both can and must be true that we're equal and diverse. In fact, the very term human diversity assumes that there's um, a human nature, that there's a sameness amongst humans. Otherwise, we're not diverse, we're just different species, right? Like we're different subspecies um, and not diverse humans. So the way the poster presents uh, this content is that there's a distinction between what we are as human beings and who we are as unique individuals and wanting to detail out and both kind of give a meaty, a textured um, articulation of what it means to be human, uh, what, what we are and what that is and what that looks like and all the different ways that we are diverse and how we can see and affirm both without being um, hypocritical or rational or uh, you know anything like that. So an example I like to use, kind of uh, draw this out, the significance of the question of our human equality, are we the same, are we equal, is that of uh, an example from slavery. So it could be modern day slavery, it could be historical slavery, but let's just say there's a slave owner riding around on his horse, looking at a slave and seeing if they're doing the field work properly. Um, and he recognizes the slave is not doing it right, he's not doing it in the most effective or efficient way. So what the slave owner does, the slave owner gets off his horse, and sits down and communicates with his slave um, on how he should be doing this field work the right way. He should be picking it like this and not like that. He should be doing it this way and not that way. And here's how you need to do it. And if you don't do it that way, um, you know, there's gonna be repercussions. It's gonna, you know, you're gonna be whipped or beaten or whatever if you don't learn how to do it the right way. So here's a system. And in this system of slavery, the slave owner doesn't see his slave as equal. He, he appeals to the fact that he owns a slave, so he thinks they're not equal, that that slave is his property, and he treats them as his property. But my question is, in this example, is it clear, can we show that it's clear that that slave and that slave owner are perfectly and precisely equal, even in this system that says they're not? And I, and I argue and suggest to you that it is perfectly clear they're equal. So for example, I guarantee you the slave owner does not communicate with his horse in the way he is communicating with his slave at that, at that point. That the slave owner is in, a, is in fact affirming the equality of his slave um, just in the very nature of communicating with him. In the, in the slave owner is in fact saying, you're a human just like me. You have consciousness just like me. You have the capacity to think and to understand and interpret the words that I'm saying and, and act accordingly. In other words, he is affirming the humanity of his slave in a very system that denies his humanity. He's affirming that human nature is fundamentally seen in our capacity to think and understand. It is fundamentally seen in the fact that we all have reason. That's what makes us different than everything else, every other creature, every other animal that exists on this planet. And the slave owner is affirming that in his slave uh, as 
he's not affirming it in a system and claiming he's property and so forth. So here I would suggest it's a universal reality that human beings are human and should be treated as humans as equals. But conversely, then you have others who say we need to affirm and celebrate human diversity and so forth and so on, which I wholeheartedly agree. Um, but it has to be kept in the right order. We first have to see our equality and then see our diversity. It goes A, then B. And if we get the order wrong, then what we end up doing is just being, we only recognize our differences. We treat our, we talk about our differences where only differences remain. And we can split that hair millions and millions and millions of times until there's nothing left but differences, and there's no room for common ground, there's no basis for equality um, in how we treat each other or for a whole society or a whole government, um, uh, like the United States, for example, to affirm we're all created equal and have the same inalienable rights um, and, and, and how we live our life, right? So, looking at the posters, the unity of the human diversity, there are multiple areas of human diversity. There's physical, Diversity, including our physical appearances that have everything to do with race, ethnicity, um, gender, shape, size, color, I mean, you name it, everything from the hair to uh, just all the different ways that our bodies look so different, our appearances look so different. Um, on top of the fact that we dress different and we, we present ourselves differently and all these good things. There's also non-physical diversity. Uh, all the different ways, different talents and personalities and interests and curiosities, different strengths and different weaknesses. Um, we have different stories, different backgrounds, different education. We're growing up in different environments, and those environments, uh, you know, serve to shape us and give us um, different ways to develop and become the type of people that we become uh, as adults. So these are just a handful of the ways that we are all so diverse. Um, and it all really, really matters, and we need to affirm and recognize what this diversity brings to the table. It can bring division if we only see those differences. But if we see that division, the diversity, in light of our sameness, then we see the diversity is a wonderful, beautiful, good thing, where we can bring different things to the table, different perspectives to the table, uh, to achieve a common goal, to achieve a common interest, to affirm our common uh, equality amongst ourselves. So we can, at the simultaneous point, we can say something like slavery is universally wrong and irrational. That that slave owner is completely picking an arbitrary thing and saying something like race or whatever uh, is what defines human nature, but it's not. Um, it's just an attribute of diversity. And we can affirm and celebrate diversity in context of our sameness. So we can do both and that's not polar opposites. So in application, I hope you'll consider this the, to first have a more robust view and understanding of yourself based on what you are, understanding what you are as a human being, how to affirm your human dignity, your consciousness, your, your thoughts, and asking why questions and seeking to understand and engaging your mind in every area of life, um, but also have a robust understanding of who you are as a whole person and all these different areas and elements and how you have a unique story to tell, unique backgrounds, and it all really, really matters. And then you can work from that basis to treat other people the same way. To recognize that other people are diverse and in, in ways that, in the same categories that you're diverse, but diverse in different ways than you are, obviously. Um, but also treat all people the same equally at a basic level, if that makes sense. So it's always A then B, we're equal, then diverse. There's human diversity. And finally, where there are differences, the differences that matter the most are, mat are in the area of how we interpret our experiences. We have different definitions of what things mean. So where people define human differently, there's going to be division, there's going to be clash. But we can still do that, still do that with humility um, and diligence, with respect and patience, as well as persistence. Uh, have meaningful dialogue as we seek the truth together, as we seek to have unity within ourselves, and we seek to have the unity of diversity around with each other. So anyway, so that's the, that's the poster, the unity of human diversity. I hope you find it useful, helpful. Go through it, you know, section by section, and just kind of um, let it cultivate a more robust view of the whole person in your mind so you can treat yourself and others accordingly, if that makes sense. All right, thanks for your time, peace.